A question that is always asked about food is where the food comes from. Where is it produced and how is it produced? And this has two aspects to it. One is an emotional aspect. You know, people who consume food are, after all, creatures who also have a connection with, uh, or in some way, uh, uh, a connection with what happens in other life forms that we eat that we consume. And in this context, there are sensitivities about feelings. A lot of people are vegetarian, for instance, because they feel that some pain is inflicted on animals and we consume it. Now, th your question is whether there is a connection between that pain that is inflicted on the animals or how animals are fed and looked after and uh, if they are stressed, whether they impact on our health. Now, the evidence that is there is not quite as clear as it should be. And the reason for this could be because we haven't thought about designing better experiments to understand the, those aspects. But there are instances where it's very, very clear that uh, molecules that come from animals which go into our diet can, in fact, modulate many, many unexpected changes in our body. And the one example I want to give you is milk um, that comes from cows from different breeds of cows. So if we go closer to the equator, you will find cows that are used to living in the warmer climates compared to cows from the higher latitude. And when we look at some genes in these cows, particularly the gene for the most dominant protein in the milk, a protein in particular called caseins, and one of the caseins called beta casein, you will find that the nature of the beta casein is different in animals that are at closer to the equator compared to the same uh, uh, species higher up in the latitude. And the beta casein is very unique in that when it's digested, it produces small peptides. F milk from breeds that are from closer to the latitude produce a different form of peptide compared to breeds from higher latitudes. And this, we know, will affect in some people. It causes diabetes because the small peptide acts as a trigger for the immune system to make antibodies to our proteins. In some individuals, this acts as a trigger for it acts like a little neuropeptide, the small peptide, and it causes, people say, autism in some children if they consume certain milk. This is one instance. Your question is slightly more about how animals are looked after. And I want to give you one example of fish. There's a lot of farming these days, fish farming, where fish are uh, put in a, a cage out in the sea, and then they are fed different things. And most of these fish, when you look at their natural diet, they have a food chain that they fit into, and they're naturally eating small, uh, smaller fish or eating smaller crustaceans from the sea, and that is part of their diet. When we come to farmed fish, you feed them the wrong things. You sometimes feed them soya meal, and this we know causes problems for the fish. When we look at the intestine of the fish that is normally meant to be living on a different diet and now being given animal uh, products as, as a diet, you get a gastroenteritis in the fish. The fish have unusual physiology that we know will reflect in unusual proteins in the flesh of the fish that we consume. Uh, the unusual changes are interesting in that if you look at some of these fish proteins that are overproduced, are no different from the proteins that we produce. What effect there is in our systems when we consume those uh, flesh, I don't know. Uh, 
It is an area that needs researching, and research always costs money, and getting money from sources is only possible if you see a truly big benefit. There may be some organizations, there may be some foundations that may come out to want this research done to, uh, to help produce better food, and maybe this is something to be considered. There are similar questions about animals kept in, uh, in crowded conditions, uh, which are force-fed. We don't know what is the story there. Uh, so these are all open, open questions, but they are valid questions. They are not uh, ill-posed questions. They are well-posed questions that uh, we can try and answer with greater clarity. Now, when we look at the biochemistry with our knowledge today, we find even more reason to understand these areas. For instance, we now know today that all animals all plants, all higher organisms, they all contain within them small RNA molecules, which are called microRNA molecules. Now, microRNA molecules are generally about 20 to 21 nucleotides long, and they are involved in regulating uh, many, many processes within the body. Uh, they travel fast in different parts of the body, they, control, they move fast and they can control and suppress activity or activate new things. Now what is amazing is that these small RNA molecules are extremely conserved across all life forms. And this is another area where we hope to see new research. Uh, Nobel Prizes have been awarded for people researching on microRNAs. Uh, the knowledge and the understanding is improving. It is still very young, but it's improving very fast. And that is another aspect of um, uh, biology and systems that come together and interact where we'll see new knowledge and hopefully provide answers to your question.